sum of 9 and 6, which gives a test statistic equal to 6. Okay, So from a signed, the signs are important here to tell us where you lie, either whether you've you've gained or whether you haven't gained with respect to the intervention. Okay? Uh, <clears throat> the signed rank test here, the magnitude of the difference from a signed rank test perspective uh, is is six here and this is our test statistic and we need to measure this test statistic well we're after measuring it there we need to compare this test statistic statistic to critical values for for, uh, for a sample of this particular size and so on so let's have a look now at the hypothesis test so the hypothesis test itself let's just take all of this information here uh, so our null hypothesis is going to be so let me just write down our five-step process excuse me so <coughs> excuse me so our hypothesis uh, has a null position and has an alternative and the null position is that there's no difference okay there's been no change yeah uh, so that there's no difference okay uh, between between before and after okay that's the null position okay and the alternative uh, is that there is a difference okay an alternative way to write that down is h0 <coughs> is that let's say is that mu of the differences <coughs> mu of the differences mu of the differences uh, is equal to 0 and ha is that mu of the differences is not equal to 0 okay and this is really representing i suppose <coughs> from a ranking perspective uh, our significance level the significance the significance level for the test will just set at alpha is equal to 0 0.05 so if i do reject the null sometimes i can reject the null incorrectly and i'm willing to do that i'm willing to allow that to happen i'm not allow it to happen i'm willing to accept that happening five percent of the time so i'll be 95 percent confident that I, if i do reject i have rejected correctly okay we've computed the test statistic so the test stat the test statistic statistic as I said, is t is equal to six. We've computed that, and now what we need to do is <clears throat> so this is step one, step two, step three, step four is our critical values, our critical values, uh, and we're going to we're going to I suppose examine a set of a critical value tables, and the tables that I'm using, okay, so the tables that I'm using, and just so that uh, you can all see this, this is a great text, the tables that I'm using is coming from non-parametric statistics for non-statisticians, and it's by Corder and Foreman, and at the back they've got a set of tables, and these tables, I suppose they do, they do give a citation as well in these tables of where they got it from, uh, they're adapted from uh, do, 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 the American uh, Statistical Association, okay, uh, so we're going to have a look these particular tables here and uh, what we need to take into consideration is our sample size but keep in mind it's our sample size excluding the well not including the values that we excluded and we didn't include this paired observation because it was a zero there was no difference between them so now we have one two three four five so we have five paired observations the alpha level is 0 0.05 so the sample size is down here <coughs> And we can sort of see that we have a bit of a problem here, okay? Uh, just in relation to the sample size, yeah. The sample size is too small for actually calculating for calculating the actual test statistic, yeah. Uh, at the five percent level, okay. We just manage it at the at the at the ten percent level, okay. Uh, so let's just have a look here. Let's just change this to be to be alpha is equal to zero point one zero, okay really what i'm saying is i should have really i should have really at this stage uh, i should have really uh, been a bit more uh, observant yeah in relation to the sample size uh, the sample size is six here okay uh, but and the tables don't go to go, don't go down that far if that makes sense so there's not really many observations so let's just change this to, to 10 percent okay so there we go at 10 percent uh, sample of size 5 the critical value is zero so this is just an unusual case we have our critical we have our critical value c is equal to zero uh, and you can see in, in all other cases yeah when the sample size increases the critical values are actually increasing as we go down through them okay and uh, so it's just that this is probably a bad example because of the sample size but i think what's important is the procedure uh, is important in, th in this particular instance uh, so the decision the decision okay, is if if the test statistic is less than the critical value 
we reject, okay? If the test statistic is less than the critical value. I suppose clearly we have that t is equal to 6, which is not less than 0, which is equal to c, okay? So the test statistic is not less than c, and as such, we fail, we fail to reject. Okay. So there's no evidence to suggest there's no evidence to suggest that there's a difference between the before and after um, measures. Uh, in other words, that the intervention had 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 no effect. Yeah, is really what we're saying. Or the intervention didn't seem to have a sig it didn't have a significant effect. I should say, there is definitely an effect. So the test statistic has a measure here. It's just not significant. And I suppose the, ex the experiment in this case, nice example of an experiment that's underpowered. Only five observations after excluding, excluding the zero. Uh, so that's that's really it, guys. Uh, just keep an eye on the sample sizes here. So the sample sizes have got an important part to play in relation to whether we actually can get a critical value to compare test statistic against. But with that said, uh, this is uh, this was Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland, and this short video, another video in our series of videos dealing with non-parametric statistics, uh, was concentrating on the Wilcoxon signed rank test, which is a dependent samples test uh, when we violate the assumptions associated with our parametric tests, our parametric, let's say, dependent samples t-test. So paired samples t-test. Okay, guys, once again, thanks for watching. Okay, bye-bye.